when we got the results of forward one, we reanalyzed all of the um, assay or all of the specimens using the PS2 by a blinded independent pathologist. So this is a very exploratory analysis just trying to figure out what happened. And what we found in the distribution of patients who were enrolled, about a third were ineligible for forward one because their full receptor alpha was actually too low. And then among those patients who were classified as full receptor alpha high by the 10x scoring, half of those were actually mediums. So our full receptor alpha high subgroup, which was one of our primary endpoints, was actually diluted out by half uh, by, by patients with full receptor alpha medium. So then we re-ran the statistical analysis just on the full receptor alpha high, which now is a much smaller population, so we've lost power. So this is purely exploratory. But when we do that and we look at the progression-free survival, it looks like the assumptions that we set forth in the study. It's the control still 3.3 months, because why would that have changed? But the um, full receptor alpha high group is now 5.6 months, and the p-value is 0 0.015. Uh, all of the secondary endpoints either are positive or trend towards positive, including overall survival where our medians go from 11 to 16.5 months. Uh, that p-value um, is not statistically significant, but we lost half of our power. So, you know, we can only sort of make hypotheses based on that, but the trend was clearly there. So, so the, I think the conclusion of forward one is it was a negative study. We did not hit on either intention to treat or uh, full receptor or full high. We did show uh, a well-tolerated agent with uh, a differentiated toxicity profile and even at 10x scoring a signal of efficacy or superiority that makes us believe still that mervatoximab has a place in the treatment of patients with platinum resistant ovarian cancer 